today we're going to learn about phylum Peridophyta from the plant kingdom. So, first thing, Peridophyta. This particular kingdom consists of ferns. It mainly consists of ferns and ferns or peridophytes these are found in moist damp shady areas they are mostly found in moist damp and uh, sandy areas or shady areas so this is the place where pteridophytes are found or ferns are found Ferns have vascular tissues. They have vascular tissues. Vascular tissues, we know they are xylem and phloem. And the common name that we give to peridophytes is um, sorry, reptiles of plant kingdom. Now, why are they called reptiles of plant kingdom? This is because this is because normal reptiles we talk about like the reptiles in the animal kingdom. Those reptiles are the first animals to live on land, so they are the first terrestrial animals. So that's how peridophytes get their name. That is reptiles of plant kingdom. So they peridophytes or ferns are the first plants to live on land that too they are they have true distinguished features in them so they have true roots leaves stem and stuff like that so they're called so they called reptiles of plant kingdom now the main the main plant body or the main stage of these ferns is sporophyte Sporophyte. And so we've seen that in bryophyta, so in bryophytes, which includes mosses, liverworts, and hornworts, in there we saw that we saw that gametophyte is the main plant body. But here, here the sporophyte is the main plant body. It's the main state. Sporophyte is where is a state where spores are produced. Now, peridophytes. They are differentiated, differentiated into true, into true roots, stem, and leaves. So basically, we can say that they have two distinguished features in the plant itself. When we saw in bryophytes, we said that. There are no there are no distinguished features like these roots, stem and leaves. We just have we just learned that there, there is a root like structure that's rhizoid, but there are no true roots in them. So that's why we call pteridophytes as the reptiles of plant kingdom. They are the ones which are truly living on land. So they're differentiated into true roots, stem and leaves. Now the sporophytes. So the sporophytes, they, the sporophytes, they produce spores, they produce spores, and these spores, they give rise to, give rise to, the spores which are produced from the sporophytes, they give rise to something which we call as photosynthetic what do you mean by photosynthetic that means it performs the process of photosynthesis phalloid 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 like structure which is sorry phalloid which is termed as the protallus 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 
which means it has a thalloid like body so photosynthetic thalloid prothal prothallus and it's important to know that prothallus is a gametophyte gametophytic structure gametophyte prothallus so this is about spores that give rise to photosynthetic thalloid gametophyte prothallus and these spores are produced from sporophytes now these spores these spores are of two types they are they are of two types homosporous they can be of two kinds we can say so homosporous and heterosporous So, homospores, these are the ones where, where spores are of similar kinds. So, spores are of similar kinds. So, spores, similar spores. But, in case of heterospores, here what happens is, there is different kinds of spores. Different spores. And mostly heterosporous kind of uh, thing, the heterosporous kind of spores, these are mostly present in Selaginella, Selaginella, and Salvinia. Salvinia. And the homosporous situation, this is the most common, it's the majority of uh, the uh, spores, uh, like the spores types. So, Homosporous, heterosporous, the ones which have the ones which have homosporous are the majority ones, but in case of heterosporous, we have two different plants or pteridophytes which show heterosporous condition that is Salaginella and Salvinia. Now these pteridophytes can be divided into four categories, four categories. The first one is known as Phylopsida. Phylopsida is the first one. The next one is Lycopsida. Phylopsida, Lycopsida, Sphenopsida, Sphenopsida, and Theropsida. So these are the four types of pteridophytes. Phylopsida, this category includes a pteridophyte which is phylotum. So phylotum is, it comes under phylopsida category. Lycopsida, this category includes two different pteridophytes that is Selaginella so this one here so it's uh, it shows heterospores condition so Selaginella and Lycopodium Lycopodium so Lycopsida Lycopodium this way you can remember it remember it so Selaginella Lycopodium Sphenopsida this category includes a pteridophyte called as equisetum equisetum and the teropsida this one includes this one includes one um, very important pteridophyte which is teris so these are the four these are the four Categories of pteridophytes, Phylopsida, Lycopsida, Sphenopsida, and Teropsida. So, here in this video, we discussed about pteridophyta. It consists of ferns found in moist, damp, sandy areas, have vascular tissues. They are also known as reptiles of plant kingdom. The main plant body is sporophyte. This is very important. Ferns or pteridophytes, they have sporophyte 
main plant body sporophytes and the dif they are differentiated into true roots, stem and leaves. In case of bryophytes, these are not very well differentiated. We have roots, but these are not very true. We call them rhizoids in case of bryophytes. But here, but here what happens is pteridophytes are differentiated into true, true parts of the plant, that means roots, stem, leaves, and all those things. But but uh, pteridophytes don't have flowers and fruits. These uh, these flowers and fruits there are these characteristics are possessed by gymnosperms and angiosperms, angiosperms especially, okay? So and they the sporophytes they produce spores and these spores give rise to prothallus which is a photosynthetic thalloid gametophyte and these spores can be of two kinds homosporous heterosporous homosporous where similar spores are there in heterosporous different kinds of spores are there so here the size can vary or, or the number can vary so different kinds of spores are there an example salaginella and salvinia and here we take we take a look at the four categories of pteridophytes Cyloptera, Lycopsida, Sphenopsida and Theropsida. So in this video we discussed about pteridophytes which are also termed as ferns.